Hello all you awesome people out there, my name is Akira and welcome back to this let's play of the Standy Parables. And this time we're actually playing the main game instead of um, before, and I am in the options menu. <laughs> uh, I was just uh, setting the resolution, so... <laughs> and I, off the bat I really like that, you actually can see my mouse on the screens down here, and if you're really looking closely you can see it on the third screen down there too. So, but um, I will begin again. So now we know the premise from the demo, so <laughs> let's have some fun. It's never the end, it's never the end, it's loading. <laughs> this is the story of a man named Stanley. Thanks. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427, and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly job and Stanley was happy <laughs> Sounds like and then one day done. something very peculiar happened something that would forever change Stanley something he would never quite forget he had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow no one had showed up to give him instructions call a meeting or even say Hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay, so I am in control now. I can't use the computer, it seems. Nope. Not even pressing the button to do anything. And of course I can't jump. I do something. Oh well. They say I step out of my office, so... All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Okay, so I think I have to go this way. Still empty. Isn't that how the horror story starts? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Door on the left, okay. Easy enough. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to, how to solve a dispute with a co-worker? It a ball up inside you. Take it up. Oh, don't read it. Anyways. So... Prune closet. Well, coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, up we go. I like the narrative just tells me what to do. This makes it so much easier for me. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked? Unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, oh. Stanley couldn't possibly have known this. Two. Eight forty-five. 
Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. <laughs> he stepped into the newly opened passageway. Okay. <laughs> Oh, he's dark. Loading. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself. To question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Of course, what the fuck? Let's see, light over here, so. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Escape, Mind Control Facility. Let's just try that, then I can try something else after. After. Okay. Well. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? This seems fun. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building. Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen. And Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Holy shit. <laughs> this is actually kind of creepy. <laughs> This mind control Fire. facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never. <laughs> it was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Facility power, I think that's... is important. So, let's see. Microsoft's ideal. <laughs> okay, let's see. And when at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Well, there we go. Control. Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Yes. He had won. He had defeated the machine. <laughs> Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this strange building hold? 
But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No, no longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps That's the only beautiful. thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. I can't. There we go. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Well, I did good. Completed the game. In one way. <laughs> I know there's a multiplier of ways to complete this. So... Oh god, we're back again. So let's see if we can find another way to complete it. Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself. That's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Nope. Still can't jump. So let's see. I'll try to go through... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yep. I think I would go for the escape... Um, Think there was down here. So right now I just more speeding through. Yet there was not a single person here either. Some of the Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, also, hoping I'm he curious. might find an answer there. Whoops. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Okay. What did I? Uh, I just wait here. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No but I like reason the broom closet. to still be here. It's fun to be here. There's cardboard, there's cable, there's it a wrench. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> but there's duct tape and a broom and bobbing gear. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Yes. Standing around doing nothing? Well, I'm looking. Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. But I'm a look at the stuff. I'm taking in the whole game, you know, like enjoying it. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. But I never duct would have thought to mention it. But duct tape and a broom and a closet. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Yeah. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> I really like the narrative in this game. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. Thanks. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Aww, I wouldn't go that far. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here, when a physical malady of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? 
The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, <laughs> making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. <laughs> oh, fantastic. I love that. Well, I don't think there's anything else here. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. Or can I? Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Can I open this door? Nope. Because the boss knows that what that what the boss says goes, if the boss suffers losses, then that's what the boss chooses. Well, that's a nice bathroom. Two eight forty five, I think the code was. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. What Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. <laughs> that kind of anxiety isn't healthy. So he relaxed for a few moments with some calming new age music. Well, that is relaxing. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> I wanted to get fast through here. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Thank you. And here we are again. Let's go down. And another loading screen. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Nope. I'm going for escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. Okay. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Nope. Uh, I'm going at this, this point, way. Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Well, oh, shit. where do we end up now? Ow, that's a broken angle again. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley was inched closer and closer to his demise, he reflected that his life had been of no consequence whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss, like plugging the eyeballs from a blind man. So he resigned and willingly accepted his end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Uh, fuck. Ah, phew. Farewell, Stanley, Wait, cried the narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body, killing him instantly. Wait, what? Where am I? It's so dark here, I can't even see anything. 
Oh. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? When every path you can walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless, making life the same. Do you see now? Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? Oh god. The two doorways. So that's where I can go left or right. This is the office begin. Oh god. So this is very So this is the, like a gallery of the items that is in the game. Oh god. Still love. Well, this is not what I had expected to find. Maintenance room. The printer. Okay. Um. This place is creepy. How do I get out of here? Uh, the office rooms. So much to see! And this gallery is actually easy to find. The elevator. Oh, an exit. Not that I don't want to see everything, but... <laughs> oh, look at these two. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Off. Can you see? No. Can you see how much they need one another? No, perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save these two. You can stop the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever you do, choose it. Don't let time choose for you. Don't let time choose. Uh, oh. I didn't press quit. I just wanted to see what happened. I'm curious if there actually is an ending if I press quit. So... Um... Okay... I can't do anything without... Pressing that one. And then I just end up in my room again, I think. Yup! You're back. So that was the um, first try. Um, next time I think I will go through the other door and see what's going to happen there. But I hope you enjoyed this episode. You can give it a thumb up if you did. You can hit me up on Facebook or Twitter or write a comment down below. You can subscribe for more videos. And I hope you all will have an awesome day. So until next time, farewell. I'm not resisting anything. Stop resisting. Whoa, what the heck? It's formed. This combat form is what happens when your power merges with mine. It's called carry form. Great. I find some sticks after I chop down the tree. Apparently, you still have to press a lot of times to cut down the tree, though.